In part one, we scratched the surface of infinity, using a left null to describe the cardinality of countable sets. To go higher than a left null, let's talk now about uncountable sets. Consider the set of all real numbers. This is not just numbers you can make from fractions. This includes every irrational number, literally every decimal number you can make between all the integers on the number line. In the late 1800s, George Cantor proved that you cannot make a one-to-one -one correspondence from the set of integers to the set of real numbers. In one of his later proofs, in 1891, he demonstrated the following example to illustrate. You can make a countably infinite set of number sequences, like so. What Cantor proved is that you can generate a brand new number using the diagonal digits along the sequence that is not included in the sequence itself. This means that we have created a sequence that does not pair one-to-one -one with the natural numbers. Cantor showed that this is precisely what happens with the real numbers. A one-to-one -one pairing cannot be made with any countably infinite set. Real numbers are therefore said to be uncountable. Even if granted immortality, you would never even be able to count all the real numbers between one and two let alone anything larger. This uncountable set of real numbers can be given a new cardinality, Aleph 1. Are there other types of infinity with even larger cardinality? Well, the same logic that applies to Aleph null may apply here. Namely, any sequence that cannot be paired one-to-one -one with the elements of an uncountably infinite set must have a different cardinality. As an example, we can imagine a set that includes every possible subset of the real numbers. This is called a power set. This, it turns out, can be shown to have a cardinality that is greater than that of the real numbers themselves. So we can move up to the next value. Aleph 2. How high do these infinite cardinalities go? We can continue to create power sets of uncountably infinite sets that have a higher cardinality than our original set. This extends for every value alpha. How many alpha values are there? At least a countably infinite number. This would imply that there are not just a few different types of infinity, but an infinite number of infinities. There is a catch to this, however. The conclusion of growing cardinalities based on Cantor's work assumes that a critical hypothesis is correct, namely the continuum hypothesis. The continuum hypothesis states that any subset or grouping of the real numbers is either finite in size, countably infinite like the integers, or has the same cardinality of the real numbers. Another way of stating this is that there are no sets that have a cardinality between a left null and a left one. This is the basis for the generalized continuum hypothesis which is what allows us to generate a countably infinite number of Alephs. Cantor believed the continuum hypothesis was true. However, he was never able to prove it. In fact, the continuum hypothesis has never been proven and has accrued arguments both for and against it by prominent mathematicians on both sides. The famous mathematician Kurt Gödel did not believe the continuum hypothesis, preferring the perspective of a universe with a great diversity of number sets, rather than the neat and tidy view of number sets that Cantor envisioned. 
So where does that leave us? If the continuum hypothesis is true, infinity takes on a new meaning as countable, uncountable, and greater than uncountable infinite sets can be constructed with ever-increasing cardinalities. If the continuum hypothesis is false, the reality of infinite sets becomes more complicated. There may in fact be deeper levels of infinity that we simply don't fully understand, with cardinalities that aren't quite so straightforward. The final twist is that the continuum hypothesis cannot be proven to be false, but it also cannot be proven to be true if we use our current understanding of set theory, which indeed is foundational to mathematics itself. This makes this question currently unsolvable until we move outside of these approaches and delve into a more unexplored region of mathematics. Until then, we will continue to be perplexed, astounded, and awed by the incredible mysteries of the infinite.